We're going to do a quick overview of the ASI Orion system status monitoring software that's designed to keep tabs, keep a check on ASI web link alarm and event notifications. Uh, looking at the panel here, there are two pieces of information. One is the traffic light, uh, green is good, yellow is getting late, and red is uh, uncommunicative. Then there's a graph, a uh, small graph that tells us uh, with the dotted line how late the response is from a web link notification and with the solid line how much delay there's been uh, receiving a notification that started from a controller. Uh, so in this site, Smith Jones King, we're only monitoring web link events, so we only have the dotted line on the graph. This site here, Joe's Coffee number 12, we're only monitoring notify events. Uh, but you can see a lot of these have uh, both lines, uh, so they're monitoring both. We are going to look now at the setup, starting with ASI WebLink. Uh, very fundamental stuff. You have to make sure you've got Enable Network Alarm Monitor on. We're going to note our IP address for the site is 1.120. Uh, you also need to make sure the mail settings are set up. And I had done that a little bit earlier using this uh, KW Monitor at ASIControls.com that's the address it's going to use to send out notifications. So both of those need to be configured. On the front end, if we log into that site, uh, again 1.120, make sure we're going to the right web server, we need to make sure the users we're going to use for monitoring have an email address so they can receive emails. Uh, info at asicontrols.com is one of them, and I'm reusing that KW Monitor address for a second user as well. Once the users are set up, uh, you put them in a group, and we've called our group ASI Alarm Monitoring. You can see our two users are in that group. And then we assign that group to our locations. And first we have the local server, that's uh, the web link originated events. And then we're also monitoring events that come from our Etherlink, which is on 1.201. Uh, that's the address. So we have users, we have a group, and we have locations defined. So now let's go to our Etherlink. And we'll do our standard ASI, ASI. Not very secure, but there it is. Uh, we'll confirm. Here's the IP address of our Etherlink device. Uh, here's the IP address of our web server 1.120 using the standard port 3001 and uh, HTTP on 80. The communication to the local controller gives us the device address. We'll use that later in uh, expert uh, talking at 19.2. Also important to enable the notify events. Uh, that has to be checked. We're using the standard port 2001. Down in system status we can see a summary you'd want to save and potentially even reboot to make sure your changes stick the very first time you set that up. We'll now look quickly in uh, Expert to see how it's set up on that end. Uh, we have a heartbeat uh, set up. What it does is it's a logic object that looks at the clock and it, cha it transitions anytime the clock is greater than 30. So once per hour we'll get a heartbeat we then have a couple timers that are attached to that, and we'll look for a particular site here. Uh, alarm number one, the notify alarm number one, is triggered off that logic object, and it fires for 60 seconds when that logic object changes state. Uh, we also have a landing point for what we call forced alarms, or manually triggered alarms through the front end. And an instance of that Let's look here, and what we're going to do is, uh, this site currently is white, meaning not monitored. So we're going to monitor web link and notify events. Hit save. We get a status right away. It's been a little while on web link, but the uh, notify from the controller is pretty late because we've got some very tight parameters on this site. And what we'll do is trigger a manual notify event. Uh, notice this is site number six. We'll just remember that right now. So we'll do a force event. And then if we're lucky, we'll be able to catch that in expert. Uh, we'll look for number six, and we'll look for forced alarm, and there it was just counting, counting down. So we can see how that push button on the front end on the browser triggers a notify event out of the uh, controller. If we then bring up our uh, email client, we should have received a notify event 
uh, there it is for, for site number six. Just showing how that uh, all ties together. Come back to Orion. We should now be able to do a refresh in a moment. Um, it's going to take a couple moments uh, for that to go through the system. Uh, but then this, this arrow here should drop down to, uh, to very uh, very recent update. We'll manually trigger the refresh, see if we can get that to go through faster here. Now we're going to have to wait a couple minutes for that. In conjunction with the timers and the logic object, we've set up our notify here. And for site number six, we can see that uh, notify was triggered. Uh, it should be about 412. There we go. 1612 is the most recent. Uh, most of the others will be at 330, which was the last time the uh, heartbeat fired uh, at 30 minutes past. And we can look at all the different ones. I've got a bunch of them set up here. So that's a very quick overview of how to tie uh, the controller and the weblink events to, um, uh, to your Orion system status monitor. We'll have more documentation on our website. And I invite you to contact me, Francis, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, at ASIControls.com if you have any additional questions.